beautiful people. Welcome to our first episode of What's the Tea? Um, this is where I discuss a little bit of this, a little bit of that, um, news and information that I come across and I want to share with you guys. I thought I'd start off with a story that I came across a few weeks ago on Facebook and Twitter uh, because when I read the news article, I was like super, 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 super duper excited. Um, and it came from the National Black Justice Coalition. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, but they are the leading black LGBTQA civil rights organization. And they held this event. It's called the annual Black LGBT Emerging Leaders Day. And what they did was they brought over 200 youth from across the country, which I thought was so amazing. And they provided them with seminars and training, and they took them on Capitol Hill, where they got to meet with like presidential cabinet members, White House officials, as well as elected members of Congress and Senate. And so when I look at their pictures, I'm just super, super, super excited because, you know, they do represent our future, and they are going to be our future leaders in the community. And so I'm super proud. Um, this event was co-sponsored by the Human Rights Campaign, as well as the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force. So kudos to NBJC for hosting this event and pulling over 200 youth, can you believe it, um, together to get some leadership training and be representative of our community. I am inspired, I am humbled, and I am honored, and I look forward to um, these young people becoming leaders. So yay, oh my god. Um, also, um, put on your calendars, um, in September they're having a, uh, and it's their fourth one that they've, it'll be the fourth one this year, and it's out on Capitol Hill, out on the Hill, I think that's what they call it, and it's a LGBT leadership summit, and it's in September, September 21st, actually it's September 18th through the 22nd, but make sure you check out their website, mbjc.org, for more information. Okay, so I got a few things on my list that I want to share with you today. Um, I'm going to start with the bad and then end with the good because that's what I prefer to do. Um, Shamika Hose Claws back in the news to be in the news uh, in regards to an event that happened back in November. But it looks like she went to um, court, um, which was surprising because earlier reports said that her lawyer was going to try to come to an agreement outside of court or outside of the need to go to court. But actually, um, she, on March 10th, they say, she went to a pre-trial conference and there she was indicted with um, a couple of different things, aggravated assault, um, like damage to a person's possession. And then she also was charged with, you know, having a handgun. So, while we thought this um, incident was going to be outside of court, it actually is going to end up in court. And if you don't know what happened, if you've been under a rock and you don't, which you could be because I'm always under a rock, so I, you know, I barely know about this. But um, back in November, I guess there was an incident that happened in Atlanta and where she was driving in her car and maybe she pulled off to the side of the road and her um, lover, um, Jennifer Lacey, who also who plays for Tulsa, Shock, yeah, she's a WNBA player as well. I guess she pulled up behind her. Um, Shamika got out of the car, and they both got out of the car. They both um, had a conversation that escalated into an argument. Um, um, the long and short of it is, because we don't really know what happened in between, is that um, Shamika busted her car window, and Shamika pulled out her gun and shot her gun. Now, she didn't shoot nobody, thank God, thank goodness. Um, but um, I'm sure... Jennifer was probably <laughs> extremely scared when she did bring out the gun. And so, you know, I mentioned the story to say this, like, you know, stop it. Lesbians, please, for the love of God. I mean, I know that we are highly emotional women. We have highly emotionally charged relationships and we love deeply. But particularly to Shamika, you know, I want to say that you are a role model. I mean, women look up to you. Young girls look up to you. And so it's important that we, you know, be mindful of our behavior. And more importantly, I just, I just don't, I just want to say that this is not acceptable behavior and, um, and this is not what we as lesbians do. And so, you know, I'm just saying, let's just, let's just be careful about what we do because, um, it does, it can have ramification and other impacts and particularly on young people who, who are looking to us as role models. So that's all I'm going to say about that, and then I'm done.
All right, so our next little bit of bad news is about a young brother, and, and, and it's heartbreaking. He was 33 years old. His name is Marco McMillan, and he was living in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Now, that is his hometown, but it looks like he lived in Memphis for a while, and then he went back home, and he was running for mayor. And what's interesting about this brother is that he was the first person, first person ever to um, run for elected office as an openly gay person which was probably really huge in Mississippi, because we all know Mississippi um, is slow to the progressive agenda. And so, but he was killed. And the story starts out that it was like on Monday, February 25th, his um, family had noticed that people were noticing that he wasn't around. And with him running the campaign, of course he's around. People, all people, all kinds of people are seeing him all the time because he's campaigning, he's trying to get those votes. And all of a sudden, nobody was seeing him, and so they reported it to the police. And then the next morning, um, there was this kind of really bad car accident. And it just so happens that the car, one of the cars that was in that accident was his SUV, but he wasn't driving it. This guy named Lawrence Reed was driving it. And so they end up arresting him, not only just for the accident in general, but they questioned him about, you know, what's up with Marco? Why are you in his car? Where's Marco at? And I guess that for a while he did give up the goods and he told them exactly where Marco was and he was not alive and he was outside of Clarksdale, Mississippi. His body was actually found in a levee outside of Clarksdale, Mississippi. Now, what was interesting about this story is that originally they were saying he was dragged, he was tarred, burned, and feathered. Um, and according to the county examiner, that's not early, early, early evidence shows that, first of all, he was not dragged and he was not um, tarred and feathered. Um, while it is not clear what exactly happened, um, they are still running the autopsy report and um, that should be available soon because they said in a couple of weeks and it's it's been a couple of weeks and nobody really knows this Lawrence Reed and his relationship to Marco so he's an interesting character as well but I was I did come across oh yeah I came across this article that um, Janelle Ross wrote for Huffington Post and I just wanted to read a little bit to you guys because I thought it was kind of interesting. Between a gospel choir's offerings, national and local dignitaries drew attention to Macmillan's drive, talent, and intellect. Even even Macmillan's own family, friends, and fraternity returned again and again to Macmillan's decision to move back to his small town in Mississippi and run for mayor. He was remembered for his high watered smile, his fondness for debate, and he had a habit of referring to family and friends as my love. But what was interesting is not one person spoke into the microphone Saturday about the precedent McMillan had already set before he died. Now, this is important. And this is interesting because it's indicative of where we are in the black community as it relates to homosexuality. Like here in this man's death, we, the family, the friends, the community, everybody knew, but nobody wanted to mention it. And I thought, what a... I just thought it was disrespectful. Like the man obviously was comfortable with who he was, but the fact that nobody else was, they felt, you know, and even John Lewis came to, you know, Representative John Lewis spoke at that funeral and he didn't even say anything about the gay thing. And so I'm, I'm just troubled by the fact that, you know, um, nothing was acknowledged about his sexual orientation. Not that it needs to be necessarily acknowledged, but the brother was doing something very remarkable. He was running for mayor. He was openly gay in a state where he, you know, I will say this. It's not clear if, you know, what happened between Lawrence Reed and Marco was a situation where a relationship gone went bad, which is not a reason to hurt anybody, or if it really was internalized homophobia of Lawrence Reed. But I think what troubles me is that nobody wants to call this hate crime. And what troubles me even more is that we as a black community are not outraged about this. And we really, we really should be. Also, Janelle um, reported that um, some family and friends shared with her that Marco had, like a couple weeks prior to him being killed, mentioned that he had gotten some death threats and that some people had told him that he needed to pull out of the mayoral race. So there was a little bit of, I guess, I, I don't know, but um, yeah, I'm just troubled by the whole thing.
On the flip side, there is some good news coming out of Mississippi. Thank goodness, because <laughs> um, there was a baby um, born in Mississippi with HIV and after two years has been diagnosed as cured of HIV, which is kind of phenomenal, amazing. Um, and the story goes a little bit like this. So the mother, uh, who was HIV positive, um, got pregnant and she did not receive any prenatal, prenatal care um, during her pregnancy. And so what ended up happening is that when she, once she went in labor and was at the hospital and had the baby, the baby was tested for HIV and the baby came up HIV positive. And luckily for her, you know, and um, I think impressive in terms of Mississippi, they immediately started to treat the baby with an antiretroviral medications. So what ended up happening is they put the baby on a regimen of drugs, um, AZT, 3-TC and nevirapine or nevirapine. Now, it looks like the mother um, gave the baby the drugs and was pretty adherent for the first 12 to 15 months um, and was going in for regular doctor's visits and everything like that. But then all of a sudden, she kind of um, had checked out, at least in terms of the healthcare system. I mean, she wasn't coming around or coming in doctor's visits. And then all of a sudden when she was, uh, when the baby was almost about two years old, she came in for a checkup and they tested the baby's blood and they found that there was, there wasn't a trace of the virus in her blood, which was different than what had happened when she was born. And that's when they kind of began to diagnose her as being cured because when she was born, she definitely had traces of HIV in her blood, and at two years old, I think it was 23 months, she no longer had any traces of the virus in her blood. And so they consider her what they call functionally cure. So um, I think this is great news for the HIV and AIDS, um, really worldwide, um, especially for kids born with the virus, as well as anybody else that has the virus, because it may... Uh, provide some really important information about curing others. So, um, okay for Mississippi. Kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. According to ABC News, um, they had this report where they took a poll, and it looks like there is more support for gay marriage now, more now than ever. That looks like 58% of the people that were polled said yes. Um, gay and lesbians should be able to be married, and it should be legal. And there was 36% that said, no, uh-uh, mm, mm illegal. And that was really, um, it was an interesting outcome because just like, I think they were saying like 10 to 12 years ago, it was the exact opposite. Only 36% of the people were saying, yes, it should be legal. And 58 to 60% were saying, oh, no, definitely not, should not, illegal. And so what's really nice about this is that we're seeing like a shift and a change in people's opinion about gay marriage. Now... I'm a little suspect of the poll because I'm wondering how does this translate to the African-American community? Um, are we more supportive of um, gay marriage or just homosexuality in general? And when I think about the Marco McMillan incident, I'm just like, mm, I don't think that poll really represents us. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little survey on the website, comingoutblack.com, and I want you to visit it. I want you to tell me your opinions. Do you think that this poll is representative of our community? Are we more supportive? Are we, you know, what do you think? And what I will do is share some of those responses on a future episode of What's the Tea. So, yeah, make sure you go to the website. Tell me what you're thinking. Because I don't know. I mean, I'm happy that the poll um, had a positive outcome, but mm, I'm not sure. What do y'all think? Okay. Let me know. Let me know. I got a couple things that I want to share with you guys if you don't know about them already. I'm always talking about visibility of black LGBTQA in the life, same gender loving people in the media or on television. And so um, th these are two things that in case you don't know about them, I just wanted to share them with you. And one is called No More Down Low TV. And they do some excellent programming. It's dynamic. It's wonderful. It's affirming. And so when you get a chance, check them out because, you know, I'm always complaining. But these folks are doing it. And the other um, web series that I'm totally in love with, although sometimes they can get a little scandalous, Woo, it's the lesbians, and it's called BetweenWomenTV.com. They mostly are on YouTube, but 
I think you can watch the episodes at their website as well. And um, I got hip to them on the YouTube, and I love them. So it's called BetweenWomenTV.com, or you can just say Between Women on YouTube, and you'll you get their web series. And I think they're in their second um, second season. Yeah, they're in the second season. And um, No More Download, they have a lot of stuff going on on their website and lots of um, videos for you to watch. So make sure you check both of them out. And don't let me have to tell you twice now. Now go on and check No More Down Low and Between Women. Okay, see you later. The last thing I want to just say is, I'm just going to do some announcements when I come across things that I want to tell people in the community. Um, one of which is Black... Black. Philly's Black Gay Pride is coming up in April. Um, they put on their website um, April 21st and then April 25th, the 28th. So I get the feeling that there's going to be an event on the 21st and then there's more events on that weekend of April 25th through the 28th. And so you can visit their website. It's um, phillyblackpride.org and they got a lot of stuff going on. So if you live in the area, make sure you check it out. You know, go to one or two events, or if you're going to be in the area or near the area and want something to do, you should go ahead and check them out. I think it's going to be a good time. They've been doing it for many, many years, so um, they're one of the Black Prides that's been around for a while. So make sure you check them out. And I just want to say to everybody, if you have news or events that you would like for me to share on What's the Tea, please, by all means, email me at charlotte at comingoutblack.com or info at coming at black.com. Either way, I will get that information and I will definitely make it my business to share it because that's that's what I'm trying to do. So I just want to say I love you. Um, just remember that you are perfect, whole, and complete. Um, and you are all right just the way that you are. Peace and much love, family. Take good, good care of yourselves. And I'll see you guys next time.